Welcome. I'm delighted to be able to worship with you. This sermon and the prayers were prepared for the seventh Sunday of Easter, May 24, 2020. My name is Dan Fugate, and I serve as assistant to the Bishop for Discipleship in the Indiana, Kentucky Synod. It is my pleasure to be with you today. I bring you greetings from our Bishop, Bill Guffian, from my colleagues on the Synod staff, and from the congregations of our Synod across the state of Indiana and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We begin today with the prayer that is appointed for the seventh Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I've made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I don't know if you can see this very well, um, and even if you could see it better, I'm not sure that you would be able to tell exactly what it is unless you looked very closely. It's a hospital ID bracelet, and it's the type of bracelet that hospitals put on a newborn baby. This one, in fact, was the bracelet that they put on my son Brent when he was born. When a baby is born, the doctors and nurses need to make sure that they know which little baby belongs to which mom and dad. Without these little plastic bracelets or some kind of identification, the hospital employees would be left wondering, whose are you with every baby in the nursery? Whose are you? Except for maybe the parents, it can be very difficult for a person to determine which baby belongs to whom. As a child grows and matures, the family connection usually becomes more obvious. The child may begin to look more and more like dad, or they may have mom's eyes or nose. At some point, the child's voice, their mannerisms, even their words and actions can point to a family resemblance. Whose are you? That question may cause us to think of our own parents. And depending on how old we are, we might be surprised at how much we look like our parents, or sound like our parents, or think like them, or even, heaven forbid, act like our parents. I'd like to ask you that question, 
whose are you at a deeper level? In fact, I'd like to think about that question as it relates to Jesus, as it relates to Jesus' first disciples, and as it relates to you and to me. When we take the question, whose are you, and we ask it of Jesus, the answer is clear from our gospel for today. Listen again to Jesus' words. Jesus says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom, they, to all whom you have given. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Those words leave no room for doubt. Jesus is God's Son who came into our world for a very specific purpose, to bring glory to God by dying and rising so that we might have eternal life. Jesus spoke these words and then on the night of his betrayal and arrest when he shared a meal with his disciples, he washed their feet and gave them that new commandment, love one another. No matter how you look at it, Jesus' words and Jesus' actions reveal, as he says in the gospel, that he and God are one. Now, when we take our question, whose are you, and we apply it to Jesus' disciples, again, the answer is clear from our gospel. We hear Jesus say, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Jesus describes his disciples as belonging to God. They were brought out of the world, and they obey God's word. That leaves us to ask our question, whose are you? of ourselves. To who do you and I belong? I can tell you that through the power of the Holy Spirit, working through God's word and sacraments, we've been given a new identity. The living and powerful word of God has given each of us a new ID bracelet. The word of God points us to the cross of Jesus and proclaims that we belong to him. The word of God enables us to think and to speak, and to live, and to act in a way which proclaims that we belong to Jesus. As the words of an old hymn say, He is mine, and I am his. The gospel says it this way, Jesus says, All mine are yours, and yours are mine, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Not only do we belong to Jesus, but Jesus prays that you and I might be one. He prays, may they be one as we are one. That shouldn't really come as a surprise to us because after all, God has created us to be one. God has created us for relationships. God's created us for community. This need is built into the very fiber of our being, the DNA of our spirit. Jesus prays that we might be one, that we might be a strong, healthy community. Dr. Bryant Kirkland was the pastor of Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church in Manhattan for more than 25 years. In that time, he preached hundreds and hundreds of sermons, and there was one thing he preached over and over again. He said it so many times that it became synonymous with his name. The phrase that Dr. Kirkland preached so many times was this, you can't go it alone in New York. You can't go it alone in New York. New York has the reputation of being tough. It's a large city and there's competition for everything from apartments to jobs. The cost of living is high and we've all heard that song that proclaims, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. I want to suggest that Dr. Kirkland was right. You can't go it alone in New York. But I also want to suggest that New York is not the only place where that is true. I want to suggest that you can't go it alone in Paducah. You can't go it alone in Fort Wayne. 
You can't go it alone in South Bend or Louisville or Evansville or Terre Haute or anywhere else. Now, that isn't news either. We all know that. The problem is that we try to convince ourselves that we can. We don't like the idea of having to rely on other people. We want to be totally self-sufficient, pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We want to believe that we can go it alone, that we can make it without anyone's help, that we don't need anyone else. God is a God of relationship, and we've been created to be in relationship with God and with all those made in God's image with one another. The good news is that we don't go it alone. In the waters of holy baptism, God makes us children of God. As our baptism liturgy reminds us, Jesus gave his earliest disciples and his disciples today that life-changing promise. I am with you always. When we are washed in the waters of holy baptism, God immediately begins keeping that promise and we're never the same. God shares every adventure, every disaster, and every joy that comes our way. Never will we be abandoned or forsaken. We can't go it alone, and that is definitely true. As baptized children of God, we don't go it alone. In the waters of baptism, we are baptized in the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we are made God's children. God walks with us through the ups and downs of life, and we are never alone. This past Thursday was the ascension of our Lord when Jesus was taken up into heaven. This coming Sunday is Pentecost, and both of these occasions remind us that God has given us the Holy Spirit, which comforts, guides, and is always with us. During these crazy pandemic times, one of the lessons many of us has, have learned is that we need one another. The inability to gather with others has shown us how much we want and how much we need one another's presence. The good news is that these crazy times have also taught us what community means. We've sometimes thought that community is built through sitting in the same building and praying the same prayers and singing the same songs. But community is forged in the fires of life. Pastor John Ortberg said it this way, quote, When we know each other deeply, the good, the bad, and the ugly, community is experienced. Community grows when we learn to rejoice with one another, celebrating life. Roots grow deep when we know we are loved by others and are free to extend love to them as well. Community deepens and is built when we commit to serve each other and let others serve us. This is critical for healthy community life." End quote. We build community through knowing and being known. Remember the theme song to the TV show Cheers. The word said, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. We long to know others deeply and to be fully known by them. We want to have people in our lives who trust us enough to disclose the deep and tender parts of themselves. Truth be told, sometimes people in bars and bowling leagues and softball teams do a better job of getting to know one another than we do as members of the church. But God wants us to realize that we all have the same ID bracelet. Whether you are a mother or have never had children, whether you have lots of siblings or are an only child, whether you come from the picture-perfect family or one that's a mess, whether you think that you are indispensable or that you don't matter much, God wants you to realize that your ID bracelet says that you belong to God. And the person who is sitting with you or who lives next door or across the world their ID bracelet says that they belong to God too. And that makes us all children of God. It makes us all part of God's family. God calls us to show our common humanity and our love for God by serving and being served. The single most stirring example of this is, of course, when Jesus washes the disciples' feet. 
And then Jesus calls them to follow his example. Servanthood is at the very core of community. To sustain deep relationships over a long period of time, there must be humility and a willingness to serve each other. God calls us to not only serve each other, but to serve this hurting world in which we live and that God loves so much. As Christians, we are called to be witnesses. We're called to walk alongside others so that they don't have to go it alone. And to be witnesses to the love that God has for us that is shown so clearly in the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. This week, no matter where you find yourself, look around for the signs of God's presence and for God's work in the world. Be open to the ways in which God is calling you to join that work. Be open to the ways God is calling you to grow closer to God and to those that God has placed in your life. Consider how God might use you to serve your siblings in Christ. This week, Remember that you belong to God, and your neighbor belongs to God, too. Amen. We turn now to prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, send your Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and to inspire us with your love. Teach us to be faithful witnesses wherever we find ourselves. Enable us to love one another so that the world may know that we are disciples of Jesus. Help us remember that we are all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, continue to be present with those who suffer from violence, hatred, war, abuse, or injustice. Guide the leaders of nations in the ways of justice and peace. Protect those who are serving people with the coronavirus. Bring about health and healing and wholeness for those who are ill with the virus. Guide the work of researchers looking for treatment or a vaccine. Help us respect one another, whether we are comfortable gathering in groups or whether we aren't. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, empower with the Holy Spirit all who serve in and through your church. We pray for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our own Bishop Bill, for pastors, deacons, and all church leaders. Grant wisdom, strength, faithfulness, patience, and love, that we might follow where you lead and engage in the mission and ministry to which you have called us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, that you have claimed us as your own through the waters of holy baptism. Make us part of your family. Forgive our sins and give us the gift of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, especially as we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who have given their lives in service to their country. Hold all those who currently serve in places of danger in your strong arms. We remember the families of those who serve, and we ask for your blessings to fill their homes and your peace to fill their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, as Jesus was raised in the power of the Spirit to live eternally, so raise us with him to live as your disciples now and to rejoice eternally in your presence when this life is past. Comfort with the hope of the gospel all who have suffered loss and bereavement, especially all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, Trusting in your mercy through your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May the God who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. It was a pleasure to share in this time with you. Please know that your Synod staff stands ready to assist in any way that we can. You can find our contact information on the Synod website, www.iksynod.org. You also find resources that are helpful during these difficult times. Peace be with you.